The class goes on quietly. The teacher seems like an okay person despite the weird first impression I got, and the material is relatively interesting. However, the way he teaches is really bizarre, it's as if he expects that everyone is a natural genius. When the final bell sounds, I've realised that there is a lot of time left in the day and I'm left wondering what to do. It's odd, at the hospital I had 24 hours a day free time, but here filling the considerably shorter hours feels difficult. Everyone else leaves and I am left alone with the teacher. Mitu is examining the assignment sheets we were working on earlier, marking them with a red ball pen. Raising his eyes from his papers briefly, he notices me and furrows his brow. What is it, Nakai? I jump at him addressing me, but I guess it's natural to spark some conversation since there is nobody else around. Um, nothing. Thinking about what I'd do after school. The teacher slowly puts the cap on the pen he is holding and arranges his papers into a stack, clacking it against the desk twice. He seems very methodical and for a brief moment I'm reminded of Shizune, but the teacher is more unhurried and relaxed, much more routined. You have no plans? No, I consider joining a club, but don't know what kind of club would interest me. He's just going to say take a look around, isn't he? Yeah, I thought as much. Go observe a meeting of someone else's club. Might pique your interest. I guess. I just... But I don't know how to continue from there. Mutu looks at me at the s in a way that makes me quickly want to take the words back to avoid a conversation. It's too late now, unfortunately, but I can't, so I have to forge ahead. I just don't know how to deal with people. I mean, the other students. I'm talking to people and everything, but it's not that I'd be isolated or anything. I just don't know what to think about. The disabilities, it's like... It feels that I'm being impolite if I pay attention to them, and it's weird to ignore them. Damned if I do, damned if I don't. My teacher scratches his cheek absent-mindedly, looking very unresponsive. Well, I'm good at giving sympathy, this guy. These things are only an issue if you make them one. You can talk normally with someone, even if they are blind or something. Try to look behind the superficial. There's not a single student here who isn't just a normal kid behind whatever they seem might seem at first glance. He says the same thing as Yuko did. Do they like pass them a memo to say the same thing? Because that was pretty much just the same wording as well. I know they're right, but it's hard. How can you not consider, for example, Shizun's deafness, when the only way to communicate with her is to talk through Misha? Or Hanako, it's not like you can ignore her face. But I'm interrupted by the door of the classroom suddenly slamming open. Oh. Teacher! Misha crashes in, hands straight in, enthusiastic for greeting, her voice loud and lively enough to wake the dead from their graves. Oh, God. That'd be the last thing we need in the school. She starts towards the teacher's desk with her bouncing step, hands energetically swinging with a rhythm. Muto, visibly dismayed at the interruption and Misha in general, slumps in the chair. Mikado? Misha stops her tracks, looks around cluelessly. It's as if she's sensing from his tone that something's wrong, but has no idea what. Yes? We have talked about volume control here before. There's probably someone with very sensitive hearing who is rolling around on the floor in pain at the moment. Yes! But she doesn't lower her voice at all, and the teacher just rubs his eyes. So what is it? I... We need help. We are running out of supplies for this festival stands. This is a distress. She waves a pink slip of paper that she's holding around. So, go get more supplies from the art room. What's the problem with that? Plywood. Plywood is always the problem. Last time you wanted more, there was only a little. But that time you just took it all and went with that. Now there's like none left there. Do you know where there is some? I don't understand. How would I know? She chan I mean, the president thought that a teacher would know where the plywood, if there is plywood. Was she wrong? Well, you could ask someone who'd know about these kind of things, you know, puts the supplies away and not, not, ju not just a random teacher? Mito looks like he's in great pain, frowning with his entire essence, and Misha doesn't get it at all. Looking at the two of them communicate is terrible, like looking at a man being tortured by drilling his skull open while blasting pop music full volume at the same time. Hey, some pop music isn't that bad. I'm afraid I have no idea if there is any plywood in the school, let alone would be if there was any. Where it would be, sorry. Aww, what should I do? Perhaps try Mr. Nomiya, I'm quite sure he would know where to find everything you need. 
You'd have to pry them from his cold, dead hands, but that's a different matter. Ah, I don't have time. We are so busy. She holds her head with both her hands, looking as despairing as it's possible for a person like her. Without even noticing, she crumples the note she's holding against his hair. His hair? Her hair. That would be odd. I shouldn't even be fetching these things. There is so much to do and we are falling behind the schedule. Mewtwo looks at her gravely and then suddenly smiles. Smiling doesn't really fit his face. I think it would be better if he didn't. It's a bit harsh. I don't think he looks that bad. Smiling? I wonder if you could get some temporary help. He switches to staring at me focusedly. Focusedly, sorry. With a hard expression. As if trying to say, go make some friends. Eh, I guess I can give you a hand. You can! Thanks, Hee-chan. You're really nice. And so begin the advances to go and join the... Whatever the hell it was. The presidentium of the school. <sighs> she pauses, does a double take, and then points at me with her finger. Yelping, ah! And looking very puzzled. Come to think of it, what's Hee-chan doing here? Class is over. You should be having fun. We just had a little chat. Oh no, it's not detention, is it? Are you in trouble, Hee-chan? I'm not. Is Hee-chan in trouble, teacher? No, he's not. Mewtwo sighs deeply, and I feel I have to help Misha to get off the teacher's back. So what do you need? Here's a list. I can try to find the plywood from somewhere if there's none in the art room. She offers me the note she's holding. I take it, hesitating a bit. I said I'd help you, but this has no implications on whether I'm joining the council or not. Aww. The council, that's what it is. I couldn't remember. Presidentium seemed like the next best thing. Still, thanks, Hikchan. Try to be quick. We are still... We are in a stall building streak now. We must hurry, hurry, hurry. Okay. She bounces out of the classroom, leaving me and the teacher looking at each other with something that feels like a silent agreement. Well, there you have it, Nakai. You have something to do now. Please don't sound so smug. I think you'd just been a bit of a bastard. He didn't do that badly, did he? Looking at the list with a number of items ranging from paint to plywood, all written with small, neat handwriting that is undoubtedly Shizun's, I heave a sigh. I'll be going then. Waving the long list limply at the teacher, I exit to the hallway. The classrooms closest to ours are designated, belonging to classes 3-1 and 3-2, to the right side, on the right side, and 3-4 on the left side, each door looking exactly the same. Further down the corridor, still with identical doors, are rooms that I didn't think were used for classes. I guess the art room is not a classroom as such. I carefully push open the furthest door and peek in. It's a classroom, but it seems rather badly kept or not in use. Am I in the right place? That's art for you, Nakai. Or oh, Hisao. Decks and chairs are all around the room. A thin layer of dust settled on them. There are some easels in the corner, so at least it looks like the right place. The room is flushed in sunlight from the big windows, shadows creeping all over the desks. Specks of dust are dancing in the stagnant air, making the beams of light almost visible. Jokingly, I call into the empty room. Anybody ha Something catches my eye and I stop mid-sentence. Sitting on a desk is a short-haired girl, curiously wearing a boy's uniform with a fork between her toes, a morsel of food stuck firmly on the end. Well, uh, don't have to guess what her disability is then. This is odd way of dining seems to be caused by her apparent lack of hands. Seems to be caused? Uh, I think it's a bit more than that, mate. Hmm. Right. This odd way of dining seems to be caused by her apparent lack of hands, but her presence here was what takes me aback even more. How did I miss her before? She's sitting in a corner very still, but I still somehow took her as part of the furnishing or a statue at a first glance. I'm not being too observant today as a whole. This girl seems to be frozen in place, staring at me with her huge eyes like a rabbit in the headlights. She's staring at me, her mouth wide open, ready to accept the fork. I'm staring at her, my mouth wide open, suddenly remembering I didn't finish my sentence and trying to think <laughs> I should. Um, considering it's been 20 seconds, mate, I wouldn't go for it. This weird stalemate keeps us both stunned in silence, punctuated only by the wall clocking ticking rhythmically. <coughs> Hello. The girl stuffs the forkful in her mouth and is now staring at me expectantly while chewing. This is a bit awkward. Um, hello, I was told to pick up some supplies from here. For some festival stalls, I think? I didn't think there'd be someone here. 
There isn't. That's why I came here too. She picks up another forkful. Doesn't that mean you're here then? She raises her eyebrows as if she was expecting my observation was false. You are pretty observant. I guess it does, but who are you? That doesn't make me observant. That makes me have common sense. Sorry to break that to you. This girl is pretty straightforward, isn't she? No, she's just quite curious as to who's knocked in. And there's dust everywhere. It only makes sense that she's a little bit weirded out. I am Nakai, Hisao Nakai. I just transferred here on Monday. I'm Rin. Tezuka Rin. Rin Tezuka. I won't shake hands with you, but at least we know who we are now. I see what you did there. That's very nice. Her deadpan manner of talking makes it hard to determine whether she's joking about shaking hands or not. It kind of bothers me. Joking about these matters doesn't feel appropriate at all. While I'm trying to figure the, what's appropriate and whether this girl is, she seems to have lost interest in me is now gazing yearningly back at her food. Can I continue my lunch? If you don't mind me, I won't mind you. If you need to get your stuff, the supplies are at the back. Go right ahead, but lunch? The school's already over for the day. What word would you use then? There is no word for a meal after lunch, but before dinner, right? It bothers me very much too, but I don't know what I should say. It's called tea. That's what it's called in England. It's well, The only thing that's annoying is when northern people start calling it dinner. It's like, no, it's tea, isn't it? Right. I don't think you are supposed to eat a meal between lunch and dinner to begin with. But I'm hungry now and my delicious box lunch would go to waste otherwise. I have curry. It's very delicious. With much decisiveness, Rin once again picks up the forks between her and her toe, between her toes, sorry, and with at least as much impoliteness, she pointed straight at me. Sir Nakai, what brings you to this place? Like I said, I was told here to look for these things. No, the school. From outside, you look fine. Is your problem inside? No, oh, she does get straight to the point, doesn't she? There's no pissing around. I come to a full stop, opening my mouth but not getting a word out. I... I can guess. I'm good at guessing. Better than most people. Rin cuts me off before I can answer her question. Or skirt around it somehow. I don't know which I would have done. I froze in front of this issue again. I haven't even told anyone here about my condition. And maybe it's only because it hasn't really come up. I do get the feeling that not making issues of this is a part of the social code here, as the teacher said. I wonder if the people here could relate. Probably not better than any normal person could. I can't relate to Shizun's circumstances, or Lily's either. Or Hanako's, or anyone's, because you have a completely different thing to someone else, but sure. Naturally, while I go through this in my head, Rin keeps considering what my condition could be, with an overtly contemplative look on her face. She puts her fork between her lips and leans back, looking at the scene as if the answer was written up there. A beam of light illuminates her face from the window side, creating a mask of dark shadow on the other side. I don't think it's anything in your head, and something in your guts would be boringly ordinary. Like this lunch of mine. And it's delicious. The problem must be in your pants. This messed up- <laughs> What? What? That's not even- close i'm assuming she's joking because no one in their right mind would come to that sort of decision oh dear this messed up sherlock holmes kind of statement and the sheer lack of tact it was delivered with catches me completely off guard i think we might have reeled back even physically as rin's eyes widen in revelation and astonishment so i was right there's something wrong with your tackle isn't there Still partially in shock, but recognising the need to reply something, I spit out the first thing I can think of. No! Nothing like that! I have a heart problem! Arrhythmia! I said it. More like blurted it out, but I said it. The girl in front of me purses her lips together and glowers at me, looking very disappointed. How boring. Trouble in the pants would have been much more scandalous. What's with this reaction? And more to the point, why would you go to a school like this if you couldn't, you know, get the sergeant standing at duty? That just makes no sense. Oh dear. I'm sorry to let you down. <laughs> that was a terrible thing to say, considering what we're talking about. I'm sorry to let you down, oh dear. I forgive you, just I collect people, and a person with, you know, that kind of problem would have been really great. Collect people? People with different problems. Sir, huh. So you just, like, go around asking people what's wrong with them? Pretty much. I see. 
Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> words, I'm... <laughs> words kind of lost me at this point. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of aghast. Um, hmm. All right, let's have continued and, you know, nothing happened. With little left to say, Rin resumes her lunch and the conversation dies away. But I keep thinking about what was said. It's the first time I told anyone else about my condition, and all the other people have either known about it already or heard about it from someone else. Or didn't need to know about it, like every other student here so far. Should I have told... This is a natural part of introductions? Is it expected of me? Hi, I'm Hisao. I have a very serious heart condition. Is that how I'm supposed to go around introducing myself from now on? As if our disabilities would define us. What a disgusting thought. No, you don't go up to a bloke in a wheelchair and he goes, Hi, my name's Dave. I can't walk. Ugh, right, sure. Let, let's, just, let's just go on, shall we? Or maybe this Tezuka girl just has an unnatural interest in such things. As I walk to the back of the room and pick up the items on Misha's list, a chance opens to study Rin from the corner of my eye. Her hair is a burnt auburn, almost orange. That's not almost orange, is it? That's pink. Orange is ginger. And cropped short. Long hair would probably be impossible with no arms. Right. The boy's uniform and the lack of arms make her look very thin. Almost scrawny. She's not particularly... She's not particularly pretty except for her murky green eyes which flicker restlessly from below her short bangs, even when she eats. The distance in the shadows make it seem like they don't reflect sunlight at all, but instead absorb it all, all of it, within them like deep walls. Walls? Wells? Damn. She moves her feet almost deftly as a normal person would use their arms. However, I can see this sight could discomfort people, especially while eating. It makes me feel a bit uncomfortable at the least. It's normal. She's got to eat. I'm just going to sit there and be like, no, oh, well, I am judging you. Because that makes no sense. I don't know. I hesitate to think the word unnatural, but it's too late now, isn't it? <laughs> unnatural, wow. So is a judgmental fuck, isn't he? Dear Lord, I keep searching the cabins and shelves of Misha's things, but after enough time passes, the silence grows too uncomfortable, and I try to force out some of the conversation of the strange girl. So, do you always eat alone in this slate, or do you get the occasional visitor? Visitors? Maybe they're my first, first occasional visitor, but I don't always eat alone either. Sometimes I eat with a certain person on the roof, if he's, she's not horsing around. Horsing? She likes to do sports. Oh. And that's all I can think of to say. Both of us fall silent again as Rin falls the last bit of the meal into her mouth. I look down at my hall and double check it with Misha's list. It seems I have everything except plywood. Okay. Hmm. So I think I have all the things now. That's very nice if you don't feel obliged to stay. I was about to take a nap anyway. You need to do whatever you're doing with that's going to do with that stuff anyway, right? Or perhaps you like to watch girls sleeping? Eh? I'm not sure what to make of this, but Rin looks serious. Even if I did, I think I have to be going. I'll I'll catch you around, Asuka. You can call me Rin. I feel that our relationship is at this point good enough to warrant this much. I was already turning to make my exit, but she draws me back in. Fine, then I'm Hisao. Then you are? <laughs> Rin looks at me hard in the eyes, but that intimidating feeling you get when someone stares at you isn't there. It's like she's actually not looking at me at all. She blinks a couple of times, and I can't figure out why a pause like this just popped out between us out of nowhere. See you later, Hisao. There is something like a tiny smile there in her face, maybe. Well, she's quite deadpan, considering, isn't she? Oh, right. I'm just trying to think what's worse. Being in a room with her for half an hour or spending an afternoon with Misha and Shizun, putting up things. Mm. A horrible thought. I do apologise if I go silence for like two or three seconds. I'm trying to drink because otherwise at the end of recording my voice is destroyed. Right, I quietly back out of the room. As I shut the door in front of my face, I whisper to myself, What an intriguing person. From inside, I hear a muffled sing-song voice. I heard that. <laughs> what did she hear? 
I jump at the sudden appearance of Misha, who I had not heard approaching despite the completely empty hallway. You'd think you would, considering how loud and bang she is. Somehow she had gotten to jumping distance of me without making a sound. Creepy. It briefly reminds me of Kenji's nutty theory about a global feminist conspiracy. Well, I push that thought aside. Yeah, that's not real though, is it? Oh, and there she's in. She soon, standing slightly behind Misha, looks aloof as she couldn't have heard the remark that drew Misha's attention. But Misha is visibly excited. No, wait, more importantly, who is in there? There's no club meetings today. She tries to curiously peek past me, even though the door prevents her from seeing anyway. Come on, Misha. You're, you're, you're normal. I, I, I've read this. I say normal. You don't have a disability. You're not blind. You can see there's a door in the way. What are you doing here? You took so long that we had to come and check what's wrong. That's no good, Hikchan. She wags her finger at me, scoldingly. I found plywood, but everything else is still missing because you are tardy. Oh, sorry. Uh, I got the things here. I was just about to bring them. I think you're up to some mischief, Hikchan. Who is in there with you, I wonder? Misha signs something quickly to Shizun, pointing at her own ear a couple of times. She soon immediately pushes... Her way past me and opens the door into the classroom I just left. I can only imagine the shock she is experiencing. With Shizun's diligence and attitude, the insolence of daring to deface school property by sleeping on top of it must be too much to bear. Well, really? That's surely not enough to, like, piss you off beyond belief. Hmm. Oh dear. And indeed, she stares at Rin, frozen in place apart from the slight and noticeable trembling of her shoulders. From suppressed rage, I'm sure. Instead of blowing up, she soon just takes a few deep breaths, adjusts her glasses and slams the door shut, turning to sign furiously at Misha. Maybe she did blow up, but I can't understand it. She shoots a very loaded stare at me too, as if it was somehow my fault that Rin is sleeping on one of the tables. That, or it's just yet another person that she soon doesn't like. I hope she's not getting any funny ideas about the reason of my tidiness. Hello. Rin's voice comes from the other side of the door and it takes a few eye blinks to realise she might have trouble opening it. I open the door to find Di Rin directly behind it, looking at us with a half-interested, half-sleepy face. Hello. Oh. Miss Tezuka, what do you think you were doing? You are absolutely not permitted to use school property for such a disgraceful activity. It sure is suddenly very crowded in here. I didn't know I was this popular. It's hard to say whether she's happy or unhappy about these turn of events. At any rate, she ignores Shizu and Misha's scolding, so they have no choice but to drop the issue. Shizu taps Misha's shoulder, points at Rin and makes some quick signs. Popularity aside, please don't do that anymore. Anyway, how is your project going? Will it be done for the festival? Rin looks at them blankly, apparently at ease under the pressure Shizun's cold stare is putting on her. She doesn't even know about a project? Oh, I keep wondering about that myself too. And... We'll think about it harder. <laughs> As Misha signs her reply to Shizun, her face turns into an unsatisfied frown. Mr. Zuka, please try to take this seriously. It'll be a disaster if the wall looks like someone threw up their lunch onto it. Well, they uh, they don't piss around here, do they? Rindus nods assertively. We'll think more seriously. Misha actually giggles at that, but she soon doesn't. <laughs> Not even after translation. <laughs> she just shakes her head, takes the materials from me, and takes off with Misha in tow. Rin frowns thoughtfully as she looks after the retreating student council duo. How rude. It's true though, I must finish my project before the weekend. There will be dire consequences if I don't. The end of the world as we know it. Like weekends usually are, but more dire. <laughs> Much more dire. Maybe I'll postpone my nap to unforeseen future. Who even speaks like that? Whatever. I'm about to ask what project she has and what are those apocalyptic consequences, but she walks back into the cl art classroom. Since you have nothing to do, would you give me a hand? This paint doesn't fit into my bag, but I need it. She kicks slightly at a huge can of paint that's lying on the floor next to a table she was sitting and sleeping on. It lets out a dull clang. Being the gentleman I am, I naturally pick it up. Heavy. Yeah, sure, where do you need to take it? Away. And with that, she takes off to the hallway, me and the paint can following since there's little choice for either of us. Mm -hmm.